us and we just did beginning of our beginning of our watch collected a beer can yeah we often don't because it takes up sample space and we document it um and then actually we were just in Papahanaumokuakea marine national monument and i believe that we actually, it's going to sound counterintuitive, but, but we weren't permitted to take anything like that in case there was any historical significance for any of our human finding. It's just documented. But again, yeah, a lot of it is just sample space. Yeah, we geotag it. Um, I note it in the observations, and it gets geotagged, and then now you note it on high pack, right? Yeah, typically, yes. And then... Uh, Tiny little star right there. The sub is small. Only so much space on it. But that one was easy. Can on top of a rock we had already collected. Are you saying I don't get many points? <laughs> oh no, I'm not talking about the star. I'm talking about the uh, the can. Oh, still. <laughs> Did you want to zoom on the star? Or should we zoom yeah. On? Now this star brought you right back to neutral, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This looks like a ravioli. I'm going to guess ravioli it's a star. goni asterid star. Go ahead and push Just a wild guess. Goni asterid. Are there associates on it, or what is that? Just discoloration? Oh, he Stupid. looks some um, plump. Okay, guys. Full. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, I have a little two feet. You want the, did we get lasers on it? Put lasers on there? Lasers are on. Collection yeah. would be very interesting. <laughs> this is actually very deep for this kind of sea star. Is it? Interesting. Both Sarah and I are experts. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we'll check in with Steve later, but I think we're going to make this call. Do you want it? Is yep. Okay. I think we're okay. It's going to depend on how much more swing we got, but yeah. I think we're all right. The last one was a slurp and dump. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably, probably what we're going to do, too. The way to go. Yeah. Is that what we're going to attempt this time? Yep. Okay. Most likely, unless it doesn't fit, in the, unless it fits in the slurp, then we won't do that. We'll just okay. it. That means it'll have to go to the forward box, if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, let's put it in A, though. A, though. So, left side? Uh, port side, yeah. I think that, I think that might just get caught in the slurp. I'm gonna steal this one. I'll keep an eye on Argus stuff while you guys do that. Roger. The viewer is asking if this is a different star sea star than the one we collected earlier yes did we collect one earlier we did not on our watch though oh there so. is a f there's one in the front bio box b um steve was on that watch so he would know whether it's the same and i'm assuming not i think the arms were shorter on that one so maybe i'm wrong chris right. ma Go ahead and push on there. 10% has said yeah, 10 that any goni asteroid beyond 2,000 meters in the Pacific, often uh, new species. Nice. So uh, ravioli star. 20. Ravioli star. Which, which time. Can we, um, is, which jar would it go in if it slurps all the way? It would go in the flesh. Oh, okay. 
You want us to put it is on? Is that okay? We can we can switch it up. Can we put a jar in there, like an actual yeah, jar, perfect. just in case it does go all the way? Thank you. It'll probably get caught, honestly, if it gets six. Is it six free? No, six is free. Looks okay. like there's something in there. No? Uh, this is a smudge on the outside. Okay, go ahead for ten. All right, thirty nice. percent suction. Yeah, that's great. All righty. You want to go ahead and open up that toolbox, please? Pull rag right back. And tool tray out there, Jake. Tool tray. Tool tray, yes. Thank you. Yeah, I can't see the other sea star in there, but. You know it's there in spirit. Yeah. All right, Jake, go ahead. Zero. Roger. Nice. Sample number? Zero three one. Zero three one. Depth three three two four. Suggestion that it might be a Cerciaster star. Sorciaster. Sir Kirk Kirkiaster? Cerciaster? All right. All right. For students out there who want to get into oceanography, don't uh, sleep on Latin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, would you be willing to answer a rock question? Of course. All right. One of our viewers said, whenever I see a broken rock from the manganese deposits like here, it has a half inch to an inch of discoloration around the edges. Is that all manganese deposits? Yeah, we, we're going to cut some, some of our samples open, and we'll post some pictures on the expedition website. But... Uh, You'll see a, a dark rim, uh, hopefully around some something that looks more like rock, and that entire dark rim is the manganese deposit. So the rock was originally the size of the center, what you're seeing in the center. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, so these rocks that we see, you know, all started a little bit smaller, but uh, now had a this manganese iron coating deposit on the outside. There's a sponge or a tunicate up there. On the last uh, expedition, we saw crusts that range <laughs> from maybe a millimeter or less to three centimeters. So quite variable. Thanks to all of our viewers tuning in. Feel free to add your questions in the chat. We are settling out. It looks like Argus is probably as as far up the slope as it'll get, but it's, it looks like it's uh, kind of coming a little bit more towards the ship. So if you go the deepest you can go would be approaching definitely 3,300 meters. Or sorry, the shallowest you can go. Approximately 3,300. 3,300? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's close perfect. enough. So yep. Anywhere here that strikes your fancy, Adam. Okay. Just going to keep looking for a bit.
Got a little quiet there, back row. Not seeing any rocks you want. Uh, no, I'm seeing I'm seeing lots. Oh. Okay. Let's uh let's kind of pull in to just a little closer so I can. You mean a little bit of a zoom? Well, no, I'd say anywhere around here that you want to just set down, and we can kind of like pan back and forth and look at what's available. Sure. So in this area, kind of like that one. <laughs> That's massive. That's pretty big. I like that one. Still pretty big. Well, I mean, it's 10, 20 centimeters, yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be bigger once you pull it out. Though. Yeah. There's some... Um, more manageable ones down with the thruster wash now, but. What about the one the lasers are on right now, basically? Right above laser to the left now? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that. This one? Uh, right. Yep, that one. The one I'll that's holding it. up the big rock? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Roger. Try to pry the at it. The one that's holding up the slope. <laughs> the keystone. <laughs> I think that one might be welded to that one. Yeah. Well, we might have a lot of things to poke at. Let's see what we've got going on. So we're doing some poking here? Yeah. yeah. Why don't we give this one a, a tug and see what happens? Roger. Solid. Pretty solid in there, yeah. What about right down there? Oh, that also looks pretty solid. I can give it a go. That's a pretty big one. Guys, I like big rocks. Yeah. Not why. Yeah. There's a song about it. If it fits in the box. I think the perfect rock for a geologist is the exact square dimensions <laughs> of that rock box. Yeah. Slightly over. And it has a handle on it. So <laughs> yeah, when, when we get to the point where we have to turn Herc over and shake it to yeah. get the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that one's like coming out. Um, Alright, why don't we uh, move up slope a little bit? Yeah, sure thing. Adam, we have a question from a viewer asking, how long do you think these rocks have been here? And would natural forces ever move them? Yeah, so I think these rocks have been here quite a long time, maybe even over 100 million years. And the ones that we're looking at, you know, around the time that they formed, probably uh, slid down the slope and kind of broke up into, into talus blocks. Um, and then stayed put pretty much. Adam, what about this one here? Yeah, if you can get that. Oh, mm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's pretty in there too. Yeah. Jake, you want to take off the stick lock there, please? Yep. Thank you. Go ahead. 
too far in the mud. Um, Jake two. Jake two. Right hand, Jake. There we go. Thank you. Right hand, Jake. Right hand. Jake. <laughs> and then left hand, Jake. What about upper right? Um, it's like an, maybe another keystone piece. Someone's up there. There's some candidates uh, up there in that clump yeah. clumpus. 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 That one could be good. Darn right. It's not too big, yeah, that one. Telestrating my thoughts now. Creepy. <laughs> <laughs> right, ready, wanna do me a favor? Yeah, ready? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Could be the one. We're gonna sharpen these coral oh, cutters. Yeah. Yes. It is a massive one, though. It is a big one. That's okay. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it until it gets stuck in the starboard bio. <laughs> yeah, let's not <laughs> scrape the seal off again. Huh? It'll go. It's a beast. <laughs> Can you hold it in the lasers when you get a chance? Yeah, we'll take a look. I guess last leg we really didn't collect any really large samples. I'm going to get a better grip on this actually. The reason for, there's a reason to collect a larger sample, which is that it, it's more likely to have fresh, unaltered basalt in the interior. Raj, not good grab either. And Yesterday, Steve collected the largest sample. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. The real reason. So yeah. is, is well, it bragging rights or is it a... <laughs> <laughs> you can see at the bottom of this one is actually it looked like a bit of alteration. I can see what you're saying about wanting not altered basalt. We had Andrea Balbus on the last cruise, and I remember the first cruise we did with her and uh, Papa and Alma Kokea, NA 101. All right, go ahead and push on there a bit, Dave, please. We kept accidentally collecting what she referred to as milk duds, <laughs> <laughs> which looked like rocks like this, and then when you bust them open, they're empty. They were just Ooh. thick manganese crust. All the way through? No, and then not on ones this size, I don't think. The cobbles, certainly. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll take it. Yep. Yep. Yes. <laughs> well, was, uh, all right. Full way, please. Bulbous. Bulbous, yeah, indeed. Ink shake. Make sure this doesn't roll out of our grip. Go ahead and open up that bin when you get a chance. Which one is this one going in again? Let's Go ahead put it that. in the uh, starboard E, which is the most forward big box. That's the one with our beer cannon, isn't it? Is it? No, we put that on a small one. Yeah, oh, that was right. A. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. You got it on over here if you need Ooh. it. Yeah. It's a little pendulum going here. You know, maybe it was a bit big. <laughs> <laughs> it looks bigger I now. <laughs> It'll go. Take that. It'll go. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Like a globe. I guess. Oh, let's not count our chickens before enough. it's hatched, guys. Okay. <laughs> was it big <laughs> enough? <laughs> <laughs> was 
the sample number on that? Zero three two. If the lid closes. If the lid Do closes. We, uh, <laughs> does it deserve two sample numbers? <laughs> <laughs> Will the lid close? <laughs> Please close. <laughs> Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> There's no getting that guy out of there. For our viewers who have just joined, Adam, can you give a quick rundown of uh, what we're looking for in the rocks, what significance of the rocks you're sampling is? Yeah, so we're interested both in the interior of the rock, which we can um, look at the geochemistry or geochemical composition of the lava that was produced by this volcano that we're moving up and we're also interested in the very outside of the rock the iron manganese crust and uh, its enrichment in rare metals like cobalt um, that that Chum. form on the surfaces are you gonna toss a plate at all I was or? thinking about it yeah uh, maybe I'll just see how I float first can we collect in the skin first oh yeah sure oh, okay. yeah good idea. oh Bubble cams doing a dance there. Um, so all Niskins are open except for one. Roger that. Uh, do you? Yikes! That was nice. uncomfortable. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, do you guys want us to fly up out of the sediment plume, or is it okay if we're in a little bit of a sediment plume? Uh, um, I don't. Doesn't look we like we're in. Can we wait for it to dissipate a bit? Yeah. I'm not too worried about the sediment. It doesn't seem like we're in a sediment plume. Right? Oh, look Over on the other bottles. cameras. Oh, I see. Yeah, you can kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Let's let it clear out. Of okay. Yeah, we'll just hold off here for a minute. Uh, which one do we want to go for when we go for it, though? Let's just go for two. Roger two. Um. Perhaps unsurprisingly, given that swell, we are falling off a little bit. Roger. We will fall off to the east. Fall off to the east, Raj. Which will bring Argus that way. Okay. You guys ready on there? Or should we wait some more? I'm fine oh. with it. Okay. Oops. Yeah, when? Yep. Oh, 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 get out oh, of there. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Double get fire. Out of here. That one didn't go though, right? No. Yeah. No. So that was Niskin Battle 2, correct? Yeah. That was 2. Got it. Oh. What the hell? There we go. Was it done? Sorry, I wasn't. I, didn't, I it, missed the closing of the bottle. It did close. Yeah, it, did yeah. Close. Yeah. Yeah. it closed. Thank you. Um. Okay. <laughs> Monitoring this situation. Let's see how you fly. Looks like they stabilized again to the east. Looks like a it's just a slow drift. Um, okay, so I can zoom out here a little bit, Adam, see where we're at. So we are kind of west of Waypoint 2, still headed up this slope, um, a direct shot to Waypoint 3, which would be slightly cross-cutting, or not too bad, would be 750 meters. Going up to this less steep slope here is about 400, 470 meters. Uh, let's, let's go up the less steep slope, and then when we get up there, we'll kind of do a, a long contour thing over to waypoint three. Sure. Still one five zero. One five zero, Raj. Bridge nav. Uh, one hundred meter step bearing one five zero. Thank you, Martina. All right, Jake. Yeah, I think we're gonna need to toss a plate. You gonna throw a plate off of here?
Go for the one on the right hand side if possible. Alright. Balance ourselves out a bit. Nice. Thank you. Adam, a viewer is asking if there is uh, active mining of the crusted rocks on a large scale at all yet anywhere. No, uh, not happening on a on a on any scale really for this type of rock. But there are um, leases that are held by nation states to uh, explore and potentially extract resources eventually. U.S. is not one of the leaseholders because we haven't signed the. Law of the Sea Convention, um, but we are exploring within the U.S. exclusive economic zone, so uh, there's very little possibility for uh, C4 mining in these areas unless it's by the U.S. This uh, view from Argus shows us sitting right on top of this uh, kind of like whale back kind of feature or ridge. We have greetings from our former SDF, Kim. Hi, Kim. And Kim is asking, do you think we're seeing more trash because we're outside of the Papahanaumokuakea monument boundaries, or maybe the current has something to do with it more? I'd say we're, <clears throat> we're a little bit closer, or actually quite a bit closer to the islands, the main islands. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine there's more, well, general proximity, but also marine Is that traffic. Is a worm or something right there? Sorry, cut you off. So, no, it's a fish, The right? fish? A yeah. fish. Rat tail. Go ahead, Dave, and push on in there. I'd say there's a high correlation of the closer you are to human activity, there's closer you are to trash. But don't know anything about any prevailing currents that would bring trash out here, but it really hasn't been a massive amount, just a couple cans here and there. And can someone talk about the plate drop? Yeah, we picked up a heavy rock, so we want to make sure that we're always still kind of positively floating and buoyant. Um, and therefore, we drop a plate to make sure that we're always going to float if we were to get disconnected from Argus. Also, it allows for better flying, too. Yeah. Those are steel plates, so they'll eventually corrode away and the uh, cord used to pick them up is hemp, so. Go away, please. Ooh, Ooh a stock sponge. Not setting us up there, was like it? A nice one. Steve, if this isn't named a tulip sponge, then I don't know what you scientists are doing. <laughs> Can I push that in there a little bit, Dave? There's also something in the background, too, another sponge. Oh, yeah. That looks like a... Oh, it's a chitin. No? Yeah. Or a bag. worm. <clears throat> or a worm. Isopod. Let's take a look. 
definitely got like little legs on it. Yeah. Let's take a look. Oh, now it's occluded. Oh, Just it kidding. is a worm. It's a polychaete or something. Mm -hmm. It's a big polychaete. Yeah. Yeah. What? That's huge. <laughs> That's crazy. Sorry, guys. Oh, it's swimming motion. So cool. Yeah. yeah, it has those little filaments. Come that are wide. That Fast. was massive. Yeah, that's cool. Ten. 15 centimeter polychaete. Yeah. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, Dave. That sponge looked like a hyalode nematid. Hmm. Yes. I like its little legs going like <laughs> that. Yeah. I've never seen this before. Not looks one, like uh, not the anything that big. Like the car wash, like the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Normally they're little tiny things. Yeah. Pollen, polynoid, polychaete, scale worm. Cool. It's great. Yeah, undershot there. Well, it's as far down as I'll go without moving the view significantly. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, wide. Very cool, though. I haven't seen those before. No, not anything yep. that big. They're just the tiny ones. It's like broken pillows in this uh, yeah. space. Yeah. Argus is on the move. <clears throat> on the move, Raj. go <laughs> oh wait can we get a close-up on that mucus funnel thing yeah sure let's look at the one above Looks yeah like they're the same sure Do we yet know what organism is making this mucus? We do not. All right, Dave. Or if the mucus is the organism itself. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. If a sea spider crawls out of there, though, I am out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That big polychaete kind of scared me. I was like, oh, that's just an encrusting sponge. Oh, no. It has a head. <laughs> It does look like a structure that was built. Mm. Yeah, for sure. You have these cool attachment points, too. 
All right, full wide there, please. Yeah, we gotta. Gotta go. Definitely, as we track up the steeper slope, we'll have to. Switching over. Oh, <laughs> pretty. I don't know what that is. Yeah, coral of some sort. All right, just yeah, turn towards the slope, keep coming up. Yep. There you go. Reset your DVL so it's a bit more realistic. Yep, go for it. One of our viewers was curious to know what some of you think the weirdest thing you've ever found on a deep sea exploration would be. Mm. Weirdest thing. Well, I didn't know that sea spiders existed until <laughs> like two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Thoroughly disturbed by it. That's pretty weird. <laughs> it's always weird to see human stuff down here because everything is very kind of organic shapes and, and things like that. So when you see something human, it does seem super out of place. Uh -huh. I think just, just uh, yesterday when we saw a fish with a, what was the thing it was wearing on its head? Oh, oh parasite. Yeah. Isopod, par yeah. or Isopod parasite? Yeah, that Like a little weird. hat. Yeah. yeah. I think you're towards the towards the end of it. Yep. Sometimes the predation events are quite weird. Like I saw last year during a time to transect a cod swallow another fish just completely whole. Oh Ooh. wow. <laughs> That's cool. It was at like the bottom of the screen, but I was like, What? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta eat. We saw Galapagos 
and maybe Adam can speak to this, but it looked like lava tubes of some kind and it had been, there was a sheet flow over it, but then that top outer tube collapsed, but it had this such an eerie resemblance to like rooms and windows and doors mm -hmm. huh. uh, that it just seemed like it built. Obviously it wasn't, it just was the, you know, you could see that where some of the the roof hadn't collapsed and in some places it had and it had just this kind of strange yeah and, and oftentimes there the crust is held up by these lava pillars yeah the pillars right yeah. which look like a tree with a bunch of rings around it because as the lava drained down it cooled against the pillar and oh, drained away neat. and cooled and drained away they look a lot like uh, tree molds that you see in, in Hawaiian lava flows, where the lava flows around the tree and quenches against it, mm. burns out the tree, and leaves mm. a, a hollow tube. Wow. We had a question about whether we are out exploring when the weather's severe or what we do to you know, make sure it's safe enough for the crew at the sea level. And we definitely were in a holding pattern when we first arrived at our first dive site to make sure that it was going to be uh, good enough conditions for the dive. Yeah, last expedition we had to rearrange our plans, um, mapping instead of diving to escape some storms. I have a question for our ROV pilots when they are available to answer. They're wanting to know, how does someone transition from Argus to Hercules pilot and what's the different between navigating or controlling the two vehicles? Well, Jess has gone through that, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the transition between the two is just, um, hmm. <laughs> getting, I guess, I guess after a while you just accumulate a, a bunch of stick time. Uh, stick time meaning that you're flying Herc. So right now Jake's flying Herc. Um, so Jake's also using this as, um, more and more herc stick time um and it's not just flying it's also manipulations uh, are a big part of flying herc as well so when jake and i are doing the in tandem if you will uh, grabs then that's also uh, good opportunities to just keep on honing in those skills um yeah so i guess just a lot of time in the sea and that's kind of the transition um you also become more aware of well not only all the sensors around you but the objectives communicating with science communicating with nav why don't you come up a bit because this is looking kind of wall like yeah just in case we gotta get some vertical do you need any specialized training in terms of mechanical electrical engineering software engineering um, you kind of learn it all on the on the job, which is nice. Well, as long as you have some engineering background. Um, Te yeah, technical background. Some technical background. Yeah, it doesn't up. have to be engineering. Um, yeah, you want to come up a bit faster there, Jake? Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a lot of a lot of this you learn when you're out here as well. If you open up a bottle once, you tend to remember what's going on, because you don't want to do it twice. Oh, there's a little <laughs> coral right there's there. There's a little coral, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. go quite a bit faster. All right. I'm not seeing that shadow dissipate. Yeah. I'm uh, approaching it. I think you're at 50% there on your joy gain, so go ahead and crank it up a bit there. And how much experience do each of you have? How many years have you been at it? Uh, I've been out with the Nautilus since 2015, so this is my seventh season. And I've been out since 2019, so it's my third season. And Rennie was 
actually born on this ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, another Start, nice coral. Started as a bosun and <laughs> <laughs> started as captain and slowly been demoted. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'll get down to Adam's yeah. position soon. <laughs> 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 Ooh, another fun question about. The ROVs are they des are the controls designated for people who are right-handed or left-handed? I got that question now. I think a few times. Um, yeah. I'll just say know. generally <laughs> the the world is biased against left-handers. Yeah. 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 I think I was probably Jake or Rennie had answered before the manips on the the master for the manip control is on the right side, so technically for a right-handed person that would be useful, but we can also switch it to the left side. Um, and there are some vehicles that have manips on both sides of the vehicle, so you have to be uh, using both your right and left hand anyway, or controlling one with, you know, with your dominant hand. Uh, that is to say, in a lot of the controls up here, you can see we're using both our hands anyways for the, for the joystick, so um, probably still biased towards right-handed people, but doesn't mean that it's predominantly right-handed, if that makes sense. We've been coming up a, at a quicker pace here just because the Argus sonar has been indicating that this wall keeps going up. It's only got a very slight slope to it, so pretty, pretty vertical. Yeah. Um, the ship move is pa uh, has stopped, and uh, but we should still have a couple, maybe thirty meters of swing left. I'll just wait till as we keep going up this, see if it flattens out. Call in another one. Roger that. For now, should be good. Yeah, with the bathymetric maps that we we produce, we're not able to to see, you know, really fine details of what the sea floor looks like. So we definitely have to pay attention to make sure that. Um, responding to you know, what we're seeing with our eyes and sensors rather than what we expect to see from the map. It's looking better. Yeah, that's looking much better though. Starting to slip away. <coughs> yeah, the general trend is there, but there's always like the resolution, you know, blockiness that we don't know until we get down there. We know, you know, we have an indicator with <clears throat> the shape of it and the backscatter that this is a seamount. Um, but maybe in the lower parts of it, it could be completely covered in sediment and a nice gradual slope um, versus this more chunky wall-like stuff. All right, I'm going to uh, keep going. So we keep losing Doppler here. Yeah, no, our, so i um, just going to, for now, keep re resetting the DVL but to USBL, but we could switch over to that if need be. Is that because the tail end is a little high off the bottom? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of straight down. Mm -hmm. and we'll See in the bubble cam. That's pretty yeah. good. vertical. All right, let's do another one. I think you're at the right. least. Let's just go right 50 there. meters. I'm gonna Roger. bridge nav. Uh, step five zero meters, bearing one five zero. Thank you. Anything to look at? Mm. Yeah, look around here. Speaking of that, this front row team, we had one of our stories of yesteryear. Um, we had a bathymetric map that we had just mapped, and it was looking good. Um, but we knew we were approaching some steeper terrain, mm -hmm. but we had no indication that it was, you know, it kind of looked like this, just general slope um, as far as the bathymetry went. And we just randomly decided, hey, let's just approach it a bit cautiously. We don't want to be laid back or anything. We stopped the boat. Argus swung, you know, <laughs> 200 meters and then landed in a position that was one tether length away from a wall that <laughs> turned out to be 200 meters vertically <laughs> straight up.
-hmm. we just kept ascending Argus and we never had to move the ship closer to the wall. <laughs> and Hercules had a view of the wall the whole time. So you can imagine if we had just pushed it another 50 meters or something, there was going to be no way we could winch up fast enough <laughs> to get to not slam into it. So we got lucky. Is that an urchin here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that one already. Good eyes. <laughs> quick, quick zoom in there, Dave. Ooh, that might be on our list. Ooh. That little thing. With the spikes. Hmm. What did you say yesterday, Renny? The ratio to something? Yeah, yeah. the spike <laughs> to body ratio. <laughs> yeah. It's a little outrageous. It's like Sput <laughs> Sputnik. <laughs> Is this on your list? Um, I don't know. They all have spikes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that one. <laughs> all right. We don't right. have to attempt it since we're on a cliff. Right. Oh, wait. Like, oh. 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 Oh, hold on. It is. It is? I believe Most it's Salonidae yeah. Salonoxcalis. Spa. Is that a yes? Is that a That's yes. a yes. Can you okay. ask it? <laughs> Bridge, no. Okay. Can I ask it? Hold <laughs> <laughs> position. Thank you. All right. So we're yeah. holding here. I think we'll be fine. Yeah. If you get in the right. trouble, mm -hmm. you can abandon the sample. Okay. I Roger. think we'll just. I only. It was only a little bit closer to the wall, so I think we'll actually. It'll do us a favor, so we won't be as stretched out. Yeah, where was that thing? Uh, lower center, moving into center. Okay. Is this a oh, there it slurp is. or a grab? Ooh. Uh, uh, I don't think this is a slurp, guys. It wouldn't be a slurp, but it would be a slurp pickup. But I don't think even that will have enough. I don't think. I think they'll break the spines. I think I gotta. Yeah. Do, do you guys have crinkle. a scoop in the? No, hangar? not we on board right now. Yeah, we took it off. Yep. Um, I'm really gonna drive your pan into a little bit here. Yep. A gentle maybe, grab. Maybe we can make one. A cradle. Make gentle one. cradle. Make a scoop. <laughs> we have a scoop um, in the shop, can... but not on the vehicle. Oh, should've, right. Should have saved that stick. Uh, you want to come full <laughs> wide there, please, Dave? Thank you. Let's change the grip for us now before we crush it to pieces. And we can put it in forward bio, make it easier. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Maybe that we could slurp it, actually. It just, the spines won't be intact. Is that okay? Um. I mean, if you grab it, the spines are not going to be intact either, yeah? Hey. I mean, I'm... <laughs> I don't know. Just be a little gentle. Faith. No. Right. Can you look a little down there, there, Jake? That, that's a better way to grab. Better surface to grab on, I think. Yeah. But that was intentional. But it was yeah, definitely not. It's rearranging. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I could. Very nice. We'll All go right. with um, port side forward bio box. Alright. Alright, full wide, please. And open up that bin. Yep. Coming out. Any full rack back there, Jake? Port I side? So. Yeah. Yeah, full right back. All right. And 
open up the iris a little bit there, please. Thank you. Nice job. <laughs> Zero three four. Right. Zero three four. Gonna look a little to the left there, or to the right. Sorry. Danke, danke. Nice, nice study flying there, Jake. Yeah, great job. I was definitely bumping into those rocks. <laughs> Keep myself steady. So. Hopefully I didn't bump anything out of alignment. <laughs> so we've got... Yeah, I'll have to catch up a bit. Yeah, it's fine. We'll just go up slope a little bit. Adam, a viewer would like to know what you would call these rock formations. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so this is a, a wall of broken pillows. So this was a, a big collection of yeah, pillow lava, the and they're part of this seamount uh, fell away, landslide, mass wasted, and we're seeing kind of a cross section through that, but uh, it's been encrusted with this manganese deposit, so uh, a little hard to see the structure. If if it wasn't there, you'd probably see like these, a bunch of round uh, cross sections of, of pillows with... Uh, uh, columnar jointing kind of going from the outside radially from the outside in you it's could, like the top of a molar yeah exactly you can pick out the hints of it but uh, it's just oh there's another one of those stars see. another one it's a crinoid it's a yeah, crinoid Rennie? I think so I think that was yeah. a crinoid this is uh, quite a steep wall we're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. And it keeps going. Some overhangs. Oh, there's another it's tulip sponge. Thank you for pr propagating that name. <laughs> <laughs> Bell sponge, also acceptable. Gonna go ahead and ascend a little bit there, Jake. Coming up. Starting to flatten out a little bit, at least in Argus. Yeah. They're very cool formations, these. A lot of extrusions. I'd love to see this forming live. Yeah, yeah, right. Heck yeah. How could, how would it even? There was some in Rivia Higedo where there's like the, they're like pancakes, but like donuts almost. They like build up, and when you go on the side, it looks like just stacked layers, of mm -hmm. layers and layers. Wonder how that kind of like toothpaste extruded out, in what order? Yeah, sometimes when they get big enough, they'll grow, like this whole ridge might grow endogenously so uh, the oh. pillows on the outside just gets are crusted over and inside it's just mushing new mm. lava in there kind of pushing mm. the whole thing apart and then a crack will form and new pillows will go on top mm. got a shout out on the chat for you jess nice collection of that urchin like thing <laughs> <laughs> um if that it's a sweet. juvenile it's even better since juvenile morphology it for most groups, it's not well known for these depths. Cool. Nice. Um, okay, I'll step another 